Hello. Hello. Welcome to One Way Ticket Podcast. We are two European Solidarity Corps volunteers living in Wrocław. I'm Marina and I'm from France. I studied cinema and I'm interested in the social and political role of film festivals. I love endless talks and debates late at night. And if I could be anywhere, I would be watching the sunrise in the mountains early in the morning with fresh air, a warm cup of tea and my friends. I'm Mariadna and I'm from Barcelona. I'm a kindergarten teacher and I'm really interested in non-formal education. I think arts and theatre are a powerful method to educate and transform the society. And if I could be anywhere, I would be in a beach in Menorca with nice weather and watching the sunset with the people that I love. We decided to create this podcast to have a space to talk and discuss about our experiences living abroad as foreigners, but at the same time to create a platform where people can find resources and tools to feel more confident to do it. In each episode, focusing on different aspects, we will invite people to share their stories and tell us how they go through this experience. Whether you are a professional traveler or you have never left your hometown, stay with us. In this first episode, We want to talk about the sport that makes you decide to go abroad. Maybe you want to leave for a short time, or maybe you don't know when you're going to come back. But the decision comes from the same place. And today we want to share with you our experiences about this situation. How was our life before coming here and why we decided to change that? But we will not be alone because we invited Avi and... Well, come, Avi. Hi, thank you for having me. Ah. Um, so, can you please, first of all, introduce a little bit of yourself? Um, so, where are you from? What are you doing here in Wrocław? And something that you want to share with us. <laughs> okay, so I come from Romania, uh, from Cluj-Napoca. And uh, this is actually my second time being in Poland as I've done a short-term volunteering project project uh -huh. with ESC, and then I'm doing a long-term one right now. Ah, okay. And what is your project about? Well, mainly I am spending my days going to school and having English conversations with kids. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the term English conversations would be very general because it's up to me to find out or figure out different activities that I can do in English so they feel more comfortable hearing the language, using it themselves and hearing mm -hmm. themselves speak in English. Okay. And what about the short um, project? Uh, the short term uh, project was with the same foundation. Uh, however, during summertime, they host a summer camp in a village near Wrocław, about an hour from here. Mm -hmm. And the topic uh, would be mainly the same. They started off doing a sort of geography skills training. But because of the demand of either the kids or the parents, it kind of turned into a a multi-subject kind of learning thing. So it's basically spending time outdoors, um, learning about uh, nature, improving geography skills, and obviously m a lot of the times it would be in English. Mm, okay, good. And maybe you can tell us about what you were doing before the volunteering like yeah mm -hmm. okay it's, what's your life <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a bit complicated to explain but I'll try my best so uh, before doing ESC um, my last job was in hospitality mm -hmm. and then when corona kind of happened all over the place I, uh, I decided I want to do something different so at the time I was living in England And then I moved back to Romania to try and figure things out. 
And actually, me being in Poland, I like to call it a happy accident because I wasn't actively looking for a project. But like many of the volunteers that I've met, I've just been contacted through the um, uh, youth platform. Yes. I, I can't recall the name. Yeah, European mm. Solidarity Corps. Is this one or not? Uh, I'm not sure. I think okay. I think it's the other one, the just the general one. Anyway, I okay. had I had an older account there, mm-hmm. and because I've applied some years ago for a project and then I didn't accept it uh, I wasn't accept- accepted and mm-hmm. I kind of forgot about it okay. so while I was uh, trying to figure things out I got a request from Carolina mm-hmm. and long story short I one month later I was in Poland wow okay so it was not very like something that you think a lot before coming here like it was like Um, oh, because you were in Romania and you were like trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, and then this yeah. appe- like, it's more appeared in your life. Yes, so I did give it a thought, uh, and I'm talking about European Solidarity Corps. However, it was not before coming to Poland. Now mm-hmm. that's why I called it a happy accident because it, when um, when Carolina contacted me and uh, I had an interview with the foundation, mm-hmm. I was quite happy because um, while I've never worked in in non formal education, it was always something that interested me. So when I came across this project and they were speaking about doing things outdoors, which I also love, and then using basically whatever skills we have with me it was the language to teach the kids i was pretty happy about it mm-hmm. so it turned out pretty pretty good mm. it's nice because in my case in my case it was quite different actually i was in barcelona and i was like finishing my studies and because i wanted to do this voluntary project before covid But <laughs> COVID came mm. and so on, and you know everyone knows. Um, but so I tried to do this project before COVID, but um, then I just gave up. Um, but I was like very sure about myself that I want to do that. So then after COVID, like not after COVID, but then I tried again. And I was like applying for a lot of projects. Not, not, not a lot, but well, I mean, for projects. How much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, but the ones that I was interested in. So it was, yeah. Mm. Um, so, and then I actually, I applied for another project, not the one that I'm doing, but it was related with Mood, Mood Foundation. Um, so actually I applied for coming here to Zamek because we are recording this podcast in a castle in Wrocław. <laughs> um, it's a cultural center and um, I applied for this project but there were people in the project um, already so um, Camila told me like oh, but I think that you are like really nice to get involved in other projects that we have blah 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 And that's it. But I was like looking for, like I was re- really hard to trying to find something. So um, yeah, like this was your only option. You knew you wanted to do an European Solidarity Corps. Yes, actually, it was my only option. I wanted to get out of um, not Barcelona, but I was not um, totally happy with my life in Barcelona. I was working, actually, I was working as a teacher in the public system. So it was, like, quite nice. I had a job and I had, like, yeah, actually, I, I had an interview with another project and they asked me, like, why do you want, why do you want to leave? So you, do you have a job? Do you, you're inside the public system. You're a teacher. You're working um, as something that you studied. Why do you want to leave? And it's like, yeah, I want to leave because here it's, like, It seems that there is like a whole world to see and to know. And it's like, um, I know Barcelona. There are lots of interesting things, but I just want to go outside and see what it's going on. So, yeah. And was it your first experience abroad or 
Um, um, yes and no. Uh, I don't know how to say it. It was it, it's my first experience, like long one for living. Yeah, exactly. Because I did some um, international training courses and some international scam- campsite, international campsite. Um, when I was young, um, but this is the first one, like the real one, like to live mm. abroad and this kind of things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> For me, it's a bit a mix of both of your stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like I was looking for it and not looking for it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like before I came here, because I arrived. Uh, Eight months ago, no? Wow. wow. A long time ago. And I was uh, working until February. Yes. And I could have continued to work at that place uh, because they offered me another job, but as an assistant. And I didn't want to do a job just to have a job. Mm-hmm. So I decided... Af- also, I graduated in October last year year so it was like the first time after I I, I start to work mm-hmm. already after my I graduated and when I ended up working in February it was like the first time that I had nothing to do like no works no studies no anything and so I wanted to do also the this volunteering a long time ago and I applied for another volunteering a few months before but I found a job and I was like at that time I was maybe it's better to work and not doing this kind of volunteering so I worked but then I when I finished working it came back again this idea of doing this volunteering and so Uh, I didn't look for it at first. I was like, no, but I'm still going to look for a job because it's COVID and it's hard (laughs) to find a job. And I was like, "Um, but I have the privilege to do this volunteering. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a lot of people want work and Mm -hmm. I can have work and I say no. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I was feeling a bit in the middle of this situation. And... Then I met a girl and we talked a lot about this, like about going abroad. And we did a very interesting like exercise of visualization. Okay. <laughs> and it helps me to, like, it's, it was very interesting because it was to focus on your feelings mm-hmm. and how you feel about working and how you feel about doing this kind of experience. So it's like some kind of meditation thing. Like it sounds weird, maybe. <laughs> but and at the end, I was like, okay. When I was imagining myself doing this volunteering, I was much more happier. So the choice, there is no choice. I want to go again, mm-hmm. and so I applied. And I think in two weeks, I like I already was. And oh, volunteering. Okay. So, like, because both of you are not the first time living abroad, I think. Like abroad of your country. Yeah. For because instance, the second time, the first time I was uh, not Erasmus, but with my studying for mm-hmm. my master's degree in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me the same. When I was in uni, uh, it wasn't study related. It was just like a like a work and travel program with the US. Mm-hmm. So I spent four months uh, close to Atl- Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. And then later on, two years in England. So this is actually the first time I live in a country where I don't speak the language. Ah, okay. And yeah, just rest assured, it's fun. <laughs> it's it's hard but you know you learn uh, something new every day uh, a lot of people don't speak English but you know if you speak a little Polish and then they speak a little English I think uh, everything works out just fine okay and mm-hmm. how it's about sorry it was yeah um, how is um, to leave like um <laughs> I don't know how to ask this. Um, how is to um, leave 
abroad, but in the way that, um, yeah, how is to live abroad? Like, what is the, maybe the most hard things that you can find that, maybe the language is one? Okay, so speaking about English speaking countries, um, I think it's about getting in tune with how things work, especially if you live abroad working. So if you live abroad working, then you have to follow a different set of rules because you're either on your own or you have maybe some people around you that help you with mm -hmm. figuring out the system and what you need to do. With European Solidarity Corps, I find it a lot easier in a way. Uh, in terms of bureaucracy and everything, you have everything sorted out for you. So you have your sending organization, your coordinating and hosting that basically help you in whatever endeavor mm -hmm. f from coming here and then implementing your own projects or ideas or whatever then, uh, yeah, I think the, um, the hardest part for me is the language. For some people, it might be the culture because, you know, uh, people come from different cultures. So maybe it's not necessarily the language that you come across to find difficult. It's the way people act, the, the way people walk, the way mm -hmm. people do basically anything. For me, the culture part, it's not that strange because... While Romania is a Latin-speaking country, we are basically Slavic, mm -hmm. in a way. So Poland doesn't seem that far from home. The language, though, sure, I understand a, f a word here and there, but anything more than that, it's just learning a bit every day. And you know what? The kids, the kids at school, they actually help a lot. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, people from here and I think it's people from every country or any country you might go to as a volunteer I have this strange feeling that they will try to help you speak the language because isn't it like that mm -hmm. somebody foreign comes to your country and they try to speak the language and you immediately like them like the other day I was on a bus using a memorized app mm -hmm to improve my vocabulary in Polish and I was sitting next to someone and I had tr uh, some trouble just figuring out which answer it was and then this person just started it was, <laughs> to tell me like oh it's that one it's ah. that one so you know it's really nice yeah 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 I, I think I agree for the language part because as I said before I was in Canada but I was in Quebec which is the French part of Canada <laughs> So they speak, like, half of the city of Montréal, they speak French and English. So it's easier, like, mm -hmm. for it was easier for me because most of the time I could speak my mother tongue. Yeah. So for me here in Poland, the language, it's the hardest part because it's... it's um, A border? Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Like when you arrive in a country and you don't speak the language, it creates a distance with mm -hmm. the people. It's yeah. harder to yeah. to make friends or mm -hmm. like to meet people because even if some of them can speak in English, when it's not your language and you are in Poland, you don't need to use English but Polish, for instance. For yeah. so it's maybe harder. So it's. Like, I would say the most difficult is the language and to create a social circle around yeah. you, but it's connected, I think. Yeah. I think it's difficult because it's difficult to arrive to a local, maybe to the local people, to local places. And mm. when you're living this, maybe think, uh, this project abroad and you're living abroad and so on... Um, that somehow I think that you want to be involved in this local thing and you want to um, to be in contact with that and when you don't know the language it's like really difficult to access on that thing actually I was now I was thinking that in, this week I went to um, here in Brutworth there is a Spanish library and they do like a meeting once a week um, it's a meeting that people just speak Spanish but there were a lot of Polish people learning Spanish. 
So it was like, I think that it was more interesting um, for me to know people from Poland. Like, mm. um, I think that since that day, I didn't have the chance to meet people from Poland in this non-formal thing. Because I know people, but like from um, like job, like the work, yeah. um, but not in this informal way and it was like really interesting um, because we were talking in Spanish and I was like helping them in a way I don't know but they were like it was like really nice because I had contact with these local people so it was like really really nice but we were speaking Spanish so if it has it, it, if the situation would be in Polish I was like completely mm -hmm. lost and it yeah. was like oh my god But yeah, yeah, language can be a border. I don't know how to say it. like something that can be difficult. So yeah. So I wanted to ask you if you um, choose um, Brodwaf or Poland in a like with a purpose or but just well, maybe in your case it was just because of the project. But uh, yeah, in my case it was. It's pretty easy to explain. <laughs> so, uh, since my first project was with the same foundation and we got along really well, yeah. uh, and they they were trying to implement this sort of introducing a volunteer to school, because I am actually the first volunteer ever to be working at that school. Oh, okay. So, like I said, we got along got along really well, and it just makes that made sense to come to Wrocław because mm -hmm. the school was here and, yeah, <laughs> right. no, nothing nothing very difficult to explain okay. and for the short term it was just because you had this possibility to do this volunteering and uh, yeah for the short one it was because I was uh, honestly interested in the project and uh, because you know I I just wanted to to be a part of a local community that on it that To be honest, I don't think I would have thought that I would be, I would have been a part of because um, I don't think I've ever thought that I would live uh, in Poland for a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't get me wrong; it's yeah. uh, it's yeah. turning out to be really really great, but I never I never never gave it a thought. Be because different reasons because of the language because you know it was just like oh okay Poland it's there but I would have never thought about it and that's it's pretty sad because uh, it took uh, like I said a happy accident to get me here yeah. yeah 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 I think in my case it was I was looking for some projects but for me it was more important the project than the country where mm. I was going so it was like yeah um. Poland, it was, why not? And I just googled some information about Wrocław and it was like, mm, it's quite nice, okay, so let's go. And it's, actually, it's a, I know some people that choose these countries in the center of the Europe because it's easier to travel. Like, I'm from Spain, so everything is far. We just have near Portugal and France and that's and Balearic Islands and but that's it. So now I'm in Poland and I'm near from like I'm near um, I'm in the center of Europe, so it's it's easier to travel if you want to travel and you want to have the chance to know um to visit um cities and so on. So yeah. And and actually in There are lots of people, like Spanish people here in Brotswell and Poland. Um, so it's a, it's a country that yeah. Spanish people... A big choose. community. <laughs> yes, exactly, a big community. So, yeah. yeah. For me, it's the same. Like, <laughs> I choose the project and then it was in Poland. But it's true that when, like, uh, before, like a few months ago, when I was looking for project and then, you know, I worked. Mm -hmm. But... At that time, I saw a lot of projects in Poland and in Wrocław. Mm -hmm. And so I looked about, okay, what is this town? Because I didn't knew this town before. And it looks very nice. So I kept this idea in my, in my mind to go to Wrocław, but mm -hmm. as a tourist. <laughs> okay. And then when I applied again a few months after, I seen this project here again in Wrocław. And... 
Uh, also, because of the COVID, <laughs> I, before that I was in a very small town, so my only activity was to go to the cinema. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And that's it. Okay. <laughs> And so I wanted to go to a bigger city uh, also. So when I see this project, it was like, okay, I like the project. The city looks like it's, it's a, not too big, but enough to do a lot of activities. And so I decided to come here because I, I had also another project in Greece. Mm. near the beach yes <laughs> in a small village <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was telling me but why did you choose Poland <laughs> instead of Greece <laughs> yeah. and the sun and everything and because I, I think in France most people like they don't know anything about Poland or Eastern mm -hmm. Europe yes. in general mm -hmm. and they have um, They, they, they don't have good opinion, <laughs> usually. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to come to Poland because I wanted also to make my own opinion <laughs> about this country. Yes. So, do you think that we can ask for the last question? Because now we know that you are an experienced person of living abroad <laughs> um, do you have any like advice to give to the people who is listening this right now that we hope will be like a lot of people um, so <laughs> do you have any advice that um, you can give to a person that is thinking that maybe I want to go abroad, mm. but I'm not sure. Or uh, maybe some, some, yes, some advice, some yeah. things, tips that you want to share and um, to make the experience easier or... Sure. Okay. So, uh, since, I've lear uh, since I've lived abroad in different circumstances, both working and volunteering... Uh, I think that a certain reoccurring thing is do, doing what you like and getting outside. Mm -hmm. Because obviously there are people that may be introverts and some people that are extroverts. And, you know, with social distancing, with Corona, my, my main advice would basically be don't be discouraged. Because when it comes to choosing a project and being accepted to one, Um, you mentioned it before I think it's very important that you choose a project that mm -hmm. you really like the country doesn't matter that much uh, as long as you like the project I think the people that you would be working with they will like you as well and then once you get accepted uh, and you live abroad yeah uh, try to come out of your shell um, do as much as you can from your own hobbies and the thing that you like and I think that is the easiest way to find people that you can relate to and it's not necessarily going to be people that come from abroad but maybe local people and just enjoy mm -hmm. oh, that's a nice advice actually um, so yeah yeah and um, I, I would say also that with the European Solidarity Corps, it's the good way, like if you are scared because you you are scared of finding an accommodation abroad or like doing all this paperwork on your mm -hmm. own, at least with this, you can have a first experience and you're not alone. Like you don't need to take care of all the hard things. <laughs> so I think it's it can be a good option, but... Uh, And yeah, as you said, I think because sometimes I can be introvert, <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm, I'm traveling, I really am trying to do things so I can meet people because I will not be the kind of person going alone in a pub and talk to random people. But I think trying to join, I don't know, an association or do activities that you like with other people At first, maybe it's a nice thing to meet people if it is something that you are scared of. Because I've heard some people that are telling me they don't want to travel because they are scared to be alone. 
But usually, and especially with this program, you are not alone, like not completely alone. You are mm -hmm. surrounded by other volunteers and you can, especially if you're going into a big city, you can meet people very easily, I think. Yeah, so... Actually, yeah. sorry. No problem. <laughs> I, I think that you're talking about some topics that we are going to talk about in the following programs of this podcast. Um, so if you are not familiar with European Solidarity Corps, that is a word that we have said a lot uh, in this program, we're going to talk about probably in the next one or uh, yeah, in some program. We're going to talk um, about more and um, how are the options to go abroad. And we're going to talk about um, in another program as well about how to, what happens when you feel loneliness in this kind of things and so on. So, yeah, I think that it's a nice way to close and end this first program. <laughs> so thank you very much, Avi. Thank you. And, yeah. Thank you. And um, we will um, see you next week. Yes. See you next week.